Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. My name is Yehezkel uh, Bernat. I am a software engineer at Microsoft and teaching assistant at the Hadassah College in Jerusalem. And if you know me from the social networks and don't recognize my name, you may probably recognize my avatar. And before I start, a short disclaimer. While I'm very proud of the fact that two of the main language features voted into C++ 20 modules and coroutines are coming mainly from uh, Microsoft employees. I, I'm not representing my employer here today, and all the views and opinions in uh, this presentation, and of course all the mistakes are mine and only mine. And, okay, enough about me, a bit about you. So my assumptions are that we are all know at least the basics of multi-threading. We understand why it's important, where it can be useful, why it's hard sometimes, most of the times. And from the elements of modern C++, and by modern I mean C++ 11 and further, uh, we all feel comfortable using auto for type deduction and lambda expressions two features that I use in my code ex examples a lot. And, uh, and please ask questions. I, I, I plan to, to keep a few minutes at the end for questions, but if something isn't clear, uh, you are welcome to ask it right away. Uh, so, our topic today is coroutines, as the title implies. And coroutines is, was published as a TS, technical specification, so, uh, sort of a feature branch of the standard about a year and a half ago, and merged for, uh, for C20, hopefully, uh, last February. But it's not that a new exper experimental feature that uh, we just discussed in theory. It has already two implementations, one with Microsoft compiler and the other with Clang. And GCC implementation started. It's still in the very early phase, but uh, hopefully we'll be ready a maybe next year. And, and this feature is in, in usage, in production, in, for a few years already. So we talk about something that we can already start playing with, and maybe even consider applying it to our code bases. And all the code examples we will see today are actual Working examples, uh, you can find the, the full code in a, in a GitHub repo. And when discussing coroutines, there are a few different layers we can discuss. This table is presented by Gornishanov, the main name behind the coroutines. So some call them goroutines. And it presented in one of the, his papers um, to, to describe the technical stack of coroutines. So at the bottom, we see the layer defined by the language, the, the things that the compiler has to do with our, with our code when we write a coroutine. Uh, above it, we see the library layer where various types are provided to, to be used with, with coatings. As we'll see in a minute, the types has a, a major role here. And most of the 
materials uh, I found till now on the web uh, from various uh, conferences, etc. I usually focus on these two layers. And I'm, I'm not going to discuss any of this. If you, if you want uh, to see, to learn more about uh, the lower level layers, I, I, I have some recommendations in the references slide at the end. And what we are going to focus is the top the, the, uh, the top layer here, what the actual code we are going to write in a, mo most of the time. The so library is uh, written once, and then we use it, we use it in our code multiple times. Uh, so this is our focus for today. Sorry. Okay, let's dive in. So, we want to do some file I.O. Maybe we have a, f a function read lines. It gets the name of the file, the path to the file, reads it line by line, and returns a vector with all the content. And may we have another function, count lines. It takes a list of file names and process them one by one and return all the, uh, how many lines they, they have. And both these functions do a lot of file I.O. So it makes sense to for them to be asynchronous function, to do it, to do it somehow with multi-threading or async API provided by the OS. And so what, what is the expected return type for if these functions are async? Any suggestion? What? Okay. I, Here's some answer. So yeah, std future is probably the best C++ offers offer us today to handle something like this. And by showing of hands, how many of you has used std future in the past? Okay, uh, less than half. So the next example will be sort of overview for it. So. We are uh, assuming these functions uh, are doing an async work by starting internally a new thread and dispatch their work into it. Uh, they have to return some sort of handle to the result because the result isn't, isn't here yet. So the tool we got with C++11 is std future. I don't want to focus following the, what I said before. I, I don't want to focus on the producer side here, how read lines, for example, is implemented, how it puts the result back to the future, uh, but more on the consumer side. Because the functions are implemented once by a, by a library or the multi-threading expert. And so how is a consumer code looks like? Uh, we have our main, we call read lines, with a file name we got, and read lines probably start the async work internally and immediately returns std future with a vector. So, and we save it 
in this local variable, F1, and conti can continue with our work while this uh, read operation is done in the, in the background. Again, with count lines, we can do the same, save it into F2, and again, we're free to, to do other things uh, on our main. And eventually, when we need to get the result from, from uh, read lines, we use F1.get. And, uh, and this call, if read lines finished the async work already, uh, the, the result is already inside F1, and that get just returns it. And if the function is still running, what will you do? Will, what we expect it to do? So, yeah, so as long as we don't have a time machine to get to the to get the result f from the future, we to get it from stood future, we have to block and wait here until it's ready. And then we can just print it line by line, and the same for F2. OK, questions? Sorry? Yeah, uh, so uh, the question is uh, if there is a way to check if that get will block uh, or the future is ready. So with C++17, we have that is ready. So we can just check if uh, the future is ready. Uh, before C++17, there are more, a bit more wordy way to do it with wait for, there is an explicit wait fun function, and we can give it a timeout. So if we give it a, a zero timeout, it returns immediately, immediately and tells us if, if it's ready or the, or the timeout passed. Uh, and anyway, check, uh, checking is ready again and again is not uh, what we usually want to do. And, you know, it's like uh, having uh, kids on a road trip and they asking, uh, are we there yet? Are we there yet? And so usually dot get is what we, we will use when we actually need the result. And OK. So, so far so good. And what, but what happens when we want to composite the functions? We call read lines, as before. But now, when we call count lines, we want to give it the result from, the, from read lines. Because apparently, the file we read with read lines has the list of the, all the Find names we want to process in count lines. So we can use f1.get to get, get the information and continue as before. Eventually, use f2.get to, to get the line count. And does it work? Yes, it works, but the first function is actually now not, not async anymore because the main, the main thread uh, sitting here in f1.get and wait for the result to be ready. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, the, uh, especially if you know uh, similar constructs from other languages, you, uh, and it's uh, already on the, on its way to 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 enter C plus plus two. There is a way to specify a continuation. So to 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 specify a function we want to run, we want to run where, uh, when the future is ready. Uh, but it, it has many uh, many issues, and the main one, from my perspective, is that it complicates the syntax very much. So let's try something else. Let's say we still you, uh, the, the main looks almost the same, just the, with a bit more white spaces. And let's wrap the, these two calls inside the lambda expression. So, and this lambda will returns whatever count lines gives us. And how we invoke it, this uh, lambda, we give it to std async. std async is another tool uh, added with C11. And it takes a function and runs it on a new thread, usually, and returns a future with the result returned by, uh, by the function. So, F is again a future, future returned by async. And now we, we got it to work asynchronously because the, the, it's not the main thread that waits here for f1.get, it's the new thread created by std async. But this is a, I, I think we all agree this is unacceptable overhead to create a new thread just to wait to pa and pass the result between the functions. So, what, are, what, the, what is the solution? Here I use CPP Core task. CPP Core is a library authored by Lewis Baker, and it provides many types and utilities to use with coroutines. Uh, currently, it's uh, the I.O. utilities it provides are uh, Windows only, sorry, but uh, it, it, it uh, demonstrates very well what we can achieve with coroutines. So what if our functions, instead of returning std future, they will return CPP core task? Uh, here is how our main will look like. So the same, uh, the same approach as I used in the last try to use a get. We have a lambda function. Inside the lambda, we call read lines, and it returns the list of the files. We call count lines with, the, with this list, and it returns the line count, and we return it from the lambda function. But here are some changes we do to this lambda. First, we specify the return type explicitly, and it isn't UN64, it's CPP core task. And CPP core task, uh, one of or the main aspect of this type is that it allows, allows uh, our function to be a coroutine. 
this is a, an important point to, no, to note about coatings. Uh, unlike uh, many other languages, in, in, C++, uh, in C++ uh, coatings, the, the, what, what uh, one of the important thing about our coating is what types, what type it returns. Uh, because the type uh, this, uh, decide about the, the semantics and the policy and of course the interface for the consumer, but also for our function itself. Uh, so we return CPP core task, and this allows our Lambda to be a core team. And then we call read lines, it returns a task, and here we use a, another aspect of task. Task is well, uh, a waitable, and a waitable means, a, without going into the, all the technical details, a, for our, for, uh, as users, what we care about here is that we can use a new operator, a new keyword, added to C++20, call wait. Call, call wait is an operator, and it does here uh, many things. So first thing, we can, use, we can invoke it because we give it as an operand the task returned from read lines. The second, it suspends our coding. This is, uh, uh, okay, maybe one, one thing before. It makes our, our lambda into a coding. The use of call weight is what tells the compiler this is not a regular function, this is a coding. Uh, again, this is a bit different from the approach taken by some other languages. The, uh, and because our function is now a coating, it can suspend. So it just stops the, the processing and returns to, to its color. And the one final thing, uh, one another thing the call weight does, it, it schedules the resumption. If the function is suspended, something must resume for the work to, to continue. So it schedules its resuming by, in this case, and here is the here I'm going on a, on a, on a fine line because, uh, because uh, so, some of the things I describe here are specific to, CPP, uh, to how CPP core implements tasks. And so, uh, it's sometimes a bit hard to, to tell what parts are more generic and what parts are specific to task, but we will see more examples. So we will see what, what is common and what is different depends on the type. Uh, so the resuming of this uh, coating will happen when the task returned by read lines will be ready. And the final thing we see is that when the function, the coding is resumed, we don't get a task of vector. It uh, unwraps, already unwraps the task, and we get the actual vector. Okay, questions? 
Okay. So now we pass it to count lines, and again, we can use, we use core weight on the task written by count lines. So this coating suspends again, and when it resumes, we get lines, and we want to return it, and we, we don't use normal return. Normal return is a compilation error inside the coating. We must use core return. Core return takes this uh, UN64 and it, know, it knows how to put it inside the task we return from our own Lambda, from our own coating. Um, okay, and here is a part of the slide that. Uh, yep. uh, you said the is a language uh, operator. Yeah. So okay, so. Uh, two points uh, from, uh, I take from your question. Uh, so the, the first one is that unfortunately, with C++20, we probably get the language uh, mechanics for coatings, but no library type. There are some proposals to add library, uh, some types like task, to the standard library, but it's probably too late for C++ Tony. So for C++ 3, probably, uh, but uh, for now we will have to, to use uh, external libraries. And okay, I, I, I will put my Microsoft hat uh, on me and uh, uh, and say that with WinRT, the, the new API, Metro, whatever, uh, the, the types there, uh, iAsync operation, uh, is already something that uh, can be used with core weight and core return. And the official documentation of uh, Microsoft uh, recommend use it like this. So this is another option if this is the platform you write to. And the main point here is that, uh, again, unlike in, in the C++ spirit, there, there is nothing special in the standard library. So uh, everyone, okay, everyone after learning uh, uh, all the sort of API provided by the language and by the compiler can write uh, such, uh, such types. So you just have to, to, uh, to, read, uh, to read the standard or whatever. <laughs> no, there are better uh, tutorials for, for, uh, for how to write uh, such uh, library types. And for example, B the uh, blog post series by Lewis Baker himself. I uh, have the links in the references. Um, so this is what we have for. Yeah, I think it, uh, okay, we, because we can't use normal return. We can use, uh, so we can use core return, core weight. Uh, we can't, 
what 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 you want me to do is to copy or move out the task I got from count lines. But for this, I have to use normal return. Yes? Regular return. Yes? No? It's, a, it's the return we know. It's not co-return. It's different semantics. Retur normal return takes a value and copies or move it out. And we can't do it from a co-routine. We must, uh, so we must use co-weight and we, I can, it can be in one line, co-return, co-weight, but uh, I think it's more readable like this. That's all. And, here, uh, and the next, the next part of the of uh, the main here is pu uh, probably CPP core specific. So I want to go faster over it, over, uh, but let's see what the standard will get for this. So the rest of main will have to be in another code team, and it must have a core return or at least core weight somewhere to be a coating to be to use CPP core task. And we we invoke them both here in T1, T2, give it to when all, which takes uh, how many, uh, whatever tasks we give it and wait for them all with sync weight that waits. It's a way to co-weight in something that it's, it's not a coating. And eventually, we get the results. The results is a tuple with all the results from the various tasks. So we use std get to get the actual result we want. Anyway, this is specifics we need at least for CPP core, the standard, who knows what uh, we will get in the standard library. Uh, but, okay. So one thing to, to uh, the main thing to note about coding versus regular function, with regular function we have two operations. We have call, and we have return. We call it, and hopefully it returns. Uh, but with coding, the thing, things are more a bit more complicated because we have now two more operations: suspend and resume. The coding can suspend, and the suspension points are where we use core weight. And eventually, it, we, uh, we have to resume it for the, for the work to continue. And in this, in this diagram, maybe func A gives func B the handle. In this case, it's just task. So if it pass the task to func B, func B can resume the the the, the coding, so it doesn't have to be the same color all all uh, uh, the same colors that it also does the resume, okay. And this uh, this pattern of uh, resuming is that. Uh, is not what we saw. What we saw is more like this. Funk A calls the coating, and please note the color code for the where each thread does does its work. So Funk A start, for example, on the main thread. 
So the main thread now runs the start of the coating. And in this case, the coating calls on actual async operation. Maybe read lines uh, is starting a new thread or whatever. And so the start async A arrange the things it, need, it needs for starting a thread. It returns on, uh, on a waitable, and the core suspend, the code in suspense. And now funk A can continue running on its thread, and it will be the thread that async A started that when it finishes uh, it works, it's work, uh, and uh, sets the result back in task, for example, that will resume the coding. And now, so this is a, async A is read lines, and async B is count lines. Uh, so we can, we can see that the coding runs on different on different thread, threads. So, for example, uh, if we have to be careful if we use thread local storage. And this is a more typical uh, pattern of the suspend, uh, suspension and res resumption. Okay, question? Uh, so we we saw this that coroutine is a generalized form of normal routine function normal function instead of just call and return we have also suspend and resume and the compiler makes sure the state like all the local variables you, uh, that must be saved between suspension points are saved of course, we, we have to take care if you, we use references or pointers, but if uh, we use value semantics, the compiler hand, handles it by its own. And the library is decided uh, about the actual semantics, because in a, in a minute we'll see another coating that be, behaves very differently because it returns a, a, a different type. So CPP call task is just a, one example. And so, okay, using core, one of the core word makes it a coating. We discussed the awaitable and how it resumed by what thread. Um, okay, and this is, uh, I think, the, the, the thing I struggled most with uh, when I, I learned about uh, coatings. Where they fit inside the, inside the, the, the call stack? So the answer is usually, oh, almost, uh, almost always, uh, on the top of the call stack, we will have something that does a real async work. Otherwise, we don't need, if, some, and, uh, if nothing is async, we can, we can just write regular functions. Uh, so we have something that does a real async work by multi-threading. On the bottom, something must ha wait immediately or eventually wait for, for the result to be, to be ready. And in the, the all calls that in between those two uh, are where coatings enter and makes the code much simpler and looks like a, like a normal function instead of all the continuations or callbacks used in a, in a more traditional multi-threading. 
Okay. Uh, I think this is, so today in the standard library we have no awaitable no, and no coding types. So I, I'm not sure I got the right. Uh, uh, you are asking how to write such a type? Uh, so again, this is a topic I don't want to go into. Uh, and uh, I really recommend reading the blog post by Lewis Baker. Uh, you, you have a link uh, at the end of the presentation. OK. Next, uh, read lines looks like a huge waste of time and memory because we read the whole file at once and we process the lines one by one, one, by one anyway. So can we improve it? And we can think about a, a few ways to, to do it with current C++, but Coutins allows us to use a single function for, and again, I use CPP core now with generator. So what if I, our read lines returns a generator? Now, let's look at how, how it's implemented. So yes. It's a very simple implementation. Uh, we, we, don't, we don't have to, to use coroutines for this. Uh, we can put all this get line uh, in, a, in, in our main function, but it still allows us to encapsulate it. And this is just an example to fit the slide, uh, in, inside the slide. And the same technique can be applied for much more complicated API. And the main point in this, uh, in this function is co-yield. Co-yield is a, a third operator added to C++20. And it also suspends the coding. It also makes our function a coding, and by, uh, but now when it suspend, not while waiting for a value to to be available to the coding, but the other way around, it makes a value, it re like returning returning a value without returning, because. It just suspends and can uh, continue running later when it resumed. So how the consumer side looks like? Again, we are inside our Lambda coating, and we call read lines, we call count lines, and return uh, co-return the lines, but read lines returns now a CPP core generator, and CPP core generator is modeled like a range, so we can use a range-based for loop to, to, read, to read it one by one, and this is how we fetch a line and give, give it to count lines that now takes only a single file each time, and does its, its processing, and we continue for the next one. Okay. Questions? Okay, so the question is, uh, what if, uh, I, I will generalize the, the question a bit. Uh, what happens 
if after the coating is suspended, we don't resume it. Uh, and here it's easy. If we, when we reach some count of lines, we decide to, to break out of the loop. And uh, so, of course, it's possible. And the coating will be destroyed uh, the same as uh, it must be destroyed anyway, because we said the compiler saves the state somewhere. So this state must be destroyed later because, uh, to free the, mem the memory. So it will be destroyed. And, but yes, uh, it is not recommended to hold a mutex locked between the suspension points. Uh, it, it power, uh, in many cases, it doesn't work well anyway because mutex uh, must be unlocked from the same thread. But, but yes, uh, we must think about uh, the case that our coding will not be resumed. And in, in most cases, uh, it's trivial, I think. So when, when the coating is destroyed, when the state is destroyed, the, destroying the state means invoking the, all the destructors for the, for the saved uh, variables, yes. Yes. Oh, you, you found a bug. Okay, yes, copy paste bug. So we'd like, yeah. So it, it should have been generator of string, not of vector. Thanks. So we yes. Oh, <laughs> this is a, a usually. Usually, we, we can expect, uh, we can ask, this, uh, the question was, uh, what happens if uh, an uh, exception is uh, thrown inside the coating? And the same question is uh, about any function that returns to the future, for example, any, uh, uh, especially if it runs by std async. And Usually, we can expect the, the exception to, to be stored inside the type we got. In this case, uh, if it's, uh, doesn't matter if it's uh, std future or CPP core task or whatever. And the next time we try to, to get something from, from it, by co-waiting on it or using in future using that get, the exception is rethrown. So this is the way to pass the exception from from one from one side to, to another. So uh, Coid allows us to write a full object in a simple function. I, in the backup slides, I, I have another example for writing a full state machine in a, in a function, just a one function. It, very sim uh, get, uh, it becomes very simple. We don't have to worry about uh, uh, constructors and what state is saved and uh, all the, uh, all all these things, and the main difference is what, ret what return type it returns. So there we have a return type that uh, Im uh, implements the semantics of state machine, so our coding is just the logic of the state machine. And so it suspends the coding like, just like co-await, but the way, the direction that the values flow is different. Co-weight 
is usually to bring a value into the protein, and co-yield is to pass a value out of the protein. And, okay. Okay. And what? Well, Uh, I can use core return if this is the final thing I want to yield. And how do you um, depends. Uh, it depends on the, on the type, because with CPP core task uh, we can't use core yield because CPP core task doesn't implement the needed uh, API for using uh, core yield, and CPP core generator doesn't allow using core weight just core yield. I'm not sure about core return, eh, but I would expect it to, to allow core return as like final yield. But maybe I, I missed something in your question. Yeah, or, I, so the compiler knows that I want a generator because I, set, I, specify, I specified the return type to be a generator. Okay. Okay. The, uh, again, uh, on excellent question. Uh, the one, uh, one, another point we see here is that we coatings we can't let the uh, we can't just let the compiler to deduce the return type we must specify it explicitly because the compiler the core weight is not connected to any specific type there is no uh, vip type that uh, the compiler prefers when we use core so we must specify explicitly what type we want. And, okay. So the final thing we, we want to have is to have both core weight and core yield for read lines. And this is possible with async generator. So again, we see how important is the type we use. And here's the implementation. I'm not going to go over it uh, here. Uh, the, the font is small for a reason. But the main point is that now we can use both core weight and core yield. And the difference in the, on, in the consumer side is that now we use full core weight. Uh, and you also you change in C++ 20. And this propagates the, the asynchronicity of read lines. So when read line suspends, when it does the file reading, our code in our lambda will suspend too. OK, so we saw the basics of coatings, the three new operators, the operation, suspends, and resume and how the return type is uh, matters. And I, and I hope we now understand a bit more how coatings uh, can be used. And that's it. <laughs> and I, I think the one way to use efficiently a new knowledge is to understand new jokes. So, uh, so we have two or three minutes. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, how do you think you can go in so I can ask the question, as much as you can ask for the what does the institution, how does it translate? We have threads, and we have the you know, persuasion of someone starting to be able to 
In parallel, uh, so we saw this diagram. The protein doesn't turn in parallel, but usually each part of it will, will run on the on different thread because the protein is used when we when on the top of the co of the call stack we have an actual async operation, and this thread of this async operation will run the resumption of the coating. So this is what, what re uh, relieves the work from the main. Yes. Okay, yeah, great, fun, uh, great question. So the question was how a generic algorithm, for example, can take either a coating or normal function. And the point is that we don't, we don't have to know that this is a coating, but the semantics of the return type must, must, be, must be known. And if stood future is become something that we can return from coding, and we know you, a normal function can return stood future too. So we get a function, we, it returns a stood future, we know how to use stood future by that get, and we don't care if this is a coding or Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.